It's happening. We're live again. And I am delighted to back with you on this Wednesday. I am hoping that my audio is a little bit better if I use my good microphone, which I forgot last time because I am learning. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we are going to talk about co-parenting and specifically what to do when your child wants their other parent more than you. So here's the question I got from a wonderful mom of two kids. And she is a co-parent. There are two grown-ups in the house and two kids. Here's the question. Navigating young kids' parental preferences. Best response for preferred and non-preferred parent. Ways to acknowledge the kids' feelings, but also letting them know that their response, no, I don't want to do bedtime with you. I want the other mom, makes the non-preferred parent feel. You know, your, your feelings matter. And so do your kids. So how do we balance the two of those? So yes, important question. And we are going to get to it. But first, we are going to do just a little self-care because self-care is important when we are parenting. When you're navigating small kids' feelings, how you feel is going to make a big difference too. So for just one minute, we're going to put our hands on our heart and we are going to take some deep breaths however you feel comfortable doing that. If you're in a place where you can close your eyes and do that, do that as well. Now we put our hands on our heart because it helps sync up our heartbeat and our brain waves, kind of regulating our thoughts and feelings together, which allows us to move forward with more intelligence in our emotional being, which is a really good thing. So I'm going to time us just one minute. Yes, we are really going to sit here right now and breathe for one minute together, starting now. You get to give yourself this one minute of peace, this one moment, maybe not of silence because people around you are talking, but with your hands on your heart, just keep breathing. All will be well when you open your eyes. 15 more seconds. You get to take a minute for you right now. One more deep breath in and out, and then open your eyes. And yes, we do need to come back and enjoy the conversation together. But that one minute, I wonder what feels different for you. I feel a little more present. I feel ready for this conversation and prepared to chat through what we're about to talk about. How are you feeling? Put in the chat, even if you're watching the replay, how you are feeling now that you just took a moment. Sometimes we think of self-care, especially as busy humans, busy parents, that I don't have time for that. Yeah, you do. Model for your kids what it looks like to take a break. Do it yourself. And even if they're climbing all over you and they're asking for help, say, sit with me. Do it with me. It can help. So now back to co-parenting and that challenge of navigating kid preferences, because it's a big deal. And often our feelings get kerfuffled in the response to our kids, just like theirs. So taking a minute to breathe when your kid does something like that, or before you even start bedtime, if there's a particular moment that you know your kiddo tends to want the other parent or something else or done in a different way, take a minute before you start that activity and breathe. You can do it with them as part of the preparation, but then you're more ready to navigate that moment. So that's one. Two, Be prepared for that request. Usually it's not a one-time request. There's a pattern of it and your feelings get hurt over and over and over again. So don't be surprised when it happens. Be prepared for it. That allows us to be responsive, not reactive. When we get reactive, we are engaged with our kids from a place of our hurt feelings. When we're responsive, we are being clear and thoughtful and we're going to have our feelings later about that because that's sometimes what needs to be done. So that's number three. You get to have all of your feelings, all of your hurtness, all of your frustration, all of your anger, all of your whatever it is for you. 
you get to have that, but not in every moment that it happens. So having that feeling and saying, this is not the moment for me to address this. This is the moment for me to get my child in bed and I'm going to have my feelings later. Just like when you're in a work meeting and the client across the table is saying something ridiculous, you don't pour water on their head and tell them they're being ridiculous. You wouldn't have a client for very long or maybe a job for very long. You hold your feelings. You are professional. You do the thing that you need to do. And then you have your feelings later. Same here. You have to have your feelings later so that in the moment you can do the job you need to do, which is getting your kid to bed. So what is possible in that moment? If you're prepared for it, if you can respond instead of react, then you know what to do. Now, depending on your family dynamics, depending on what's possible, maybe you change, maybe you don't. For me, that is a combination of how your child asks and what other logistics are there. And if you are prepared for a teaching moment or if you had a hard day, as in, if you've had a really, really, really hard day and you're on your last bit of anything, then just switch parents because you're not going to be able to do that with grace. You're not going to make it a teaching moment. You're just going to get frustrated and angry and feel worse and use up the last little bit of anything you had. But if you can use it as a teaching moment for your kiddo, then go through that hard moment. Okay. Two other proactive things for you as a parent. Oh, no, no, not yet. We're not going to do that. Sorry, kerfuffle. That's what happens when we go live. Those are part of the kid things. So just say yes. Make it easier for yourself. Give yourself permission to make it easier for you. And the final piece is talk to your partner. What is it that they do at bedtime that is different from you? Because there might be a piece of the routine. There might be a reason that your kiddo wants to switch that really isn't about you or them. It's about they read three books and you only read one. It might be that they bring an extra cookie to bed that you don't bring. Well, I hope not, but maybe. So talk to them and confer. This is what I do. This is what you do. What's happening? And so there may be differences that make a change, okay? So take care of yourself and learn all the information that you need to learn in order to maybe do it smoother in the future. That's how you take care of you. Second part. Now, what do you do with your kiddo? How do you teach them about this preference? How do you engage in that moment? Well, there are a few proactive things before bedtime to do. One is make a plan. Make a calendar that says, this is when I'm going to put you to bed. This is when your other parent's going to put you to bed. Or maybe there's a babysitter some days or a grandparent or a family friend, like whoever is going to be putting them to bed, put it up on a calendar, make a plan so that it's not a surprise. When we know what to expect, it is easier for us to go to, along with the plan. Two, make sure that whoever's on the calendar is the one doing it. Because then that match match makes it easier to stick with it. Because my imagination of what's happening in your home or in this family's home at night is that the other parent is putting another child to bed or getting dinner ready for the grownups or working or, you know, there are a million other things that they are doing. So they're not actually available in that moment, but can move forward. So it might not be an option. And if it is in a concrete place that is not your decision, it's It's on the calendar. That's what it says. So we have to do it. It depersonalizes it a little bit. So it makes it easier for a child to understand and follow through. Three, if you want this behavior to change, then at some point you have to let it not work. As in when they say, I want my other parent, not you. You have to say, I'm the one you have, my love. I'm here. Let's keep going with evenness because that will help them get back on track. Okay. If their whining works, then they are going to keep whining to get the other parent for whatever reason. We may or may not know, but we don't want to let that switch happen. We want to keep going. Now, what do you do once you've said, no, you have me for bedtime? Often what happens in many homes is that we then get in a conversation with our kiddo about what is it that you want? What do I want? What's happening here? Why are you asking for them? What's better? That hurts my feelings. All of this commentary. Well, your kiddo's upset and they're not thinking clearly and they might not have the words or they might not even know why. They just might know that they have this impulse to want to change it, but they're not sharing it yet. So 
you are going to say, okay, I hear you. You have me though. And then keep going forward. What is the next step that needs to happen to get bedtime to go smoothly? What is the next thing on your agenda? Is it putting on pajamas? Is it reading a story? Is it brushing teeth? Whatever it is, move along and talk about that step. Okay. It's time for us to sit down and read a book. So do you want to pick a book? I want my other mom. Okay, then I'll pick a book tonight. You go over, you grab the book and you sit down and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sit and start reading. And you sit down and start reading. Stop having the conversation about this debate of one parent versus the other parent and move forward with the action that needs to happen and start reading. You stay focused, be willing to talk to your child and stay engaged with them around the thing that needs to happen. Now, I know kids can be very persistent and kids can sometimes perseverate on wanting to be in that conversation with you. So they'll say things like, why are you ignoring me? Or it's not okay. Or you never listen. Or I never get what I want. Really good information that does not need to be addressed in that moment. And I would keep moving forward and keep moving forward. Read the book. Book ends. Maybe read another book. Maybe it's now time for bed. And move forward with the, I'm going to tuck you in. Now, I promise I'm not delusional. So I don't think that they just are magically going to get in bed and lie to sleep quietly, even though they've been yelling on the floor for the past 15 minutes that they want their other parent. I'm clear that that is not going to go as smoothly as it sounds right here. But having been in hundreds of homes, because I do home sessions with families, what I know is the more that you stay on track with the clear, positive action-based directions, the more likely it is that that's going to work. That at some point you're going to say, okay, it's time to get in bed. I'm going to turn off the lights and I'll sit here till you get in bed. The more you stay in that conversation and not fight with them, the more they get that that is the only option forward. That is the only next thing to do. And therefore, at some point they get up off the floor and they get in bed. Now, might there be other things that have to happen in between? Maybe. But without knowing your particular family and the details of your life, this general concept is the best I can do in a YouTube video. So if you have specific details you want to know, let me know, reach out. I'll put my email in the description so you can ask questions or you can sign up for my mailing list to get other information that you can pair with this. But the more that you keep moving forward and then show your child love when they move forward with you, the more likely they are to listen. It also is possible that this type of behavior, the I want something else, right? It's not necessarily about the people, but maybe you give them a red cup and they want the blue cup, or maybe you give them pretzels and they wanted goldfish. Or if you are seeing this switch that constantly happens, there might be an easier moment in your life to address this issue. It may be easier during snack time to switch snacks. And when you give them pretzels and they say, oh, but I wanted goldfish, you end up giving them goldfish. Well, maybe you want to start giving them saying, I gave you pretzels and now we're going to have pretzels. Next time we can have goldfish. That might be an easier moment to teach them that lesson than at bedtime when everyone's tired and you're coming up against the deadline of if they don't go to sleep now, tomorrow is going to be hard and all of those competing elements that bring in anxiety. So if you're seeing this switch, look for it other places. Maybe when it doesn't involve people and use that as a teaching moment to teach them the skill of, of being okay with what's there, that knowing that this is a good choice too, and moving forward. Okay. Those are my thoughts. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you have questions in general that you want answered in my Wednesday wisdoms and go have fun at bedtime, which might be my final thought for you actually, which is sometimes bedtime is crunchy because we are tired and our kids are tired, and it just is kind of like the last log of getting things done. So you might need to add in a little more sweet moments, a little more moments of cuddling over the demands of what is the next step. You may have plenty of those sweet moments there, but if you're having some challenges, those sweet moments might help them get further and help them get in bed with you. Okay. So have fun with your kids, enjoy your kids, and I will see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Have a great day.